Well, something else that you did, and, and people who watch Fast and Furious um, or know the series, there's a, um, a scenario where a couple of guys with chargers, the bad guys with chargers, pull a vault out or the safe out of the wall in a bank and then proceed to drag it across a bridge. You know, you said you were in Puerto Rico. Is that where this actually yeah, happened? San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. So basically there is this, this uh, they're, they're, pulling, they're pulling this, uh, this safe and destroying everything in its path. I don't know mm-hmm. whether you've seen that particular deal, but well, it's crazy. Bouncing off cars. Bouncing off of cars right, and the whole right. bit. Well, it wasn't a real safe, but it was fabricated out of quarter wall. I think it had four by four corners or three by four corners, but it was really heavy and then mm-hmm. just steel plates. So it's an eight foot square cube. But then as you go along, you, there is a deal. And, and again, we've got the video where you can see that the, the safe is actually a truck. And it's got a, a front piece on it that is the safe, basically. The, it, it is, and it'll all be taken out in post. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Banty, and car builder, Steve Strope. And we're going to tell you some stories. Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith. Yes. That's you. Yeah, that's that's me. it. You got to do that, see? Yeah. Mm. We, we should just roll like that. <laughs> They're rolling. Yeah, they are rolling <laughs> the right now. The name of the show is not <laughs> him and something Tim, to do with cars. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's something like Car Kai Confessions car, with car, Jeff Smith. Car, car, yeah. Yeah, car, yeah. Yeah. yeah, bring it on. With cars on them, yes. <laughs> you want to do it again? Yeah, probably. <laughs> He's just rolling. He's gonna, We're just rolling. <laughs> He's not going to cut. We're just rolling. <laughs> they don't, they right. don't really care. Not, not, not many people. He's not cutting it. He I'll yes, <laughs> you bet. I think a couple of people went to the fridge to get some snacks. Right, they'll be yeah. back in a couple of minutes, so we'll yeah. just go ahead and start while they're getting there. I think that'd be okay. Good so uh, it's okay, like a grab me fruit. some chips <laughs> while you're there. Juji, Juji fruit. Thank you. Fine. <laughs> go to plenty. Deloche, Deloche. Uh, you know what I'm talking that, about. That's it's an Italian motorcycle, yes, isn't it? No, that's a Ducati. I do. Yeah, the ice cream. Sure. I'm surrounded. It's like it's like a daycare. <laughs> Okay, Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith, right? That's okay, what, that's what it's We're called. here with my friends Cam Benty, Steve Strope, and uh, we're just making stuff up as we go along here. So, um, you know, another episode, another, yeah, all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. Um, the beauty of doing this kind of show is there's always something to talk about. There's yep. always new stuff happening. We were coming out there, we followed behind a charger, and it was like, talk about Hemis. It's yep. like, make yep. killer horsepower. Third gen. You know, yeah. Not bad. Nice stuff, Not bad. you know. So there's always horsepower to talk about, but there's also new stuff happening. You bet. So gigawatts. That, the That's right. Gigawatts are, yes, they are there. They're hip. Yep. That's they're, it. Yeah, apparently. And I, now, I didn't do my homework, everyone, on purpose, so... So I've you're going to be told suitably, suitably surprised that Ford has a new electric pickup truck. Yes, I've seen photos and da 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 da. So right. I'll let you explain it, and then I'll give my over opinionated. <laughs> oh, it's one more vehicle for people to feel warm and fuzzy about themselves, giving to the earth, even though nobody has That's a right. way to get rid of the Absolute, batteries. Absolutely. Well, that, honestly, I just like the fact that you can put your luggage under hood. You know, you don't just open it up. And <laughs> yeah. Put your stuff. Well, in that's there. important in a truck because there's it no is. room anywhere else. It is. Well, you got all the batteries in the bottom. So yeah. what the heck? Good for rollover. So was it, was it that John Perley Huffman said got rid of all that pesky utility? That's right. <laughs> what the heck with that? All that annoying room in the that's bed. Right. right. Move right. that over. Yeah. So but yes, I my mean, questions besides, and yes. I'm sure one of you got the stats with the power and all that stuff. I had to we write do. it down. So we I can, do. I make tell sure me, get it right. tell me the powers. What so we're looking at. The beauty of electric motors is you have. Like instant, instant torque. When you flip that switch, you have you maximum bet. torque. Right. On the pro model, seven. Well, actually, this, the, the torque is the same. Model? Well, what there's is, a standard and then a pro athletes, model. Athletes. The, the torque is actually the, the same on the standard and the pro. It's 775 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's like, impressive. That's like yeah, you know that's, 600 cubic, 632 big block Chevy yeah, kind no, of that's, stuff that's, running on pump gas. Okay. So just to put that in perspective. All right. Yeah. So 775 foot pounds of torque on the Pro model, which is the one, upper one, which correct? is the upper one. Right? They just run right. the voltage up higher. Yeah, five hundred and sixty-three horsepower. Okay, what so can it, what impressive, can it tow? impressive, and then ten thousand pounds is towing. is towing capacity. Ten thousand. Ten thousand pounds. My three that's quarter ton will do eighteen thousand. I know, I know, but with diesels, okay. that's that's the no, advantage. No, mine's a six four Hemi. Okay, the Hemi. Okay. Anyway, anyway, Even yeah. so it'll do ten thousand pounds. But still, ten thousand pounds. It's yeah. not reasonable. That's, no, yeah. right. It's reasonable. Is this? By the way. We, you said pro or Lord right. is, is there multi like right now if you buy go by the engine powered there's an F one fifty, an F two fifty, an F three fifty. Correct. What is this? It's an F one fifty. It's an F one fifty. Okay, so it's an F one fifty and an F one fifty. Which carries the name which carries the name Lightning. The Lightning. Remember the Lightning? The, connect, the, the old Lightnings? 
get the connection. Yeah, that's really oh, swift. Isn't that? <laughs> now, I'll just make enemies with Ford's marketing right now. Wow. I can't believe you thought of that all by yourself. Well, they, they, all, they do, all they had to do was carry it over. Yeah, I, so, I know. Well, you saw that, what they did with the Volkswagen, right? Point. So, so the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the point, it, it, well, not the point, but one issue is if you're going to use a truck to tow with, what is the range? And I, in the quick, that's what I was about in to the, ask you. In the right. quick, all this power, in the quick we all know research, the batteries go. If you yes. start putting it under Especially low. when you put 10,000 pounds behind it. Yes. Right. And I couldn't right. find that in the press release. It oh, maybe it was there. It. If it is, I apologize yes. to Ford, but I couldn't find it. But it is, now it they, they did say 300 mile range. That's probably not towing. No, that's the extended range. That's the extended range. The, the base range is 230 miles. 230, and then okay. the extended range with the, or the extended uh, package gets you up to 300. Now, what we talked about earlier was how much does the load erode that. Uh, Crinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was that was your electric water. Bottle. That's right. That's were you trying was. to were you trying to show voltage? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the bottom line is that yes, when you when you load something up, obviously, especially with electricity, you're you're gonna you're gonna erode it quicker. So the extension of how far it will go with a full you know full bed of stuff and and my luggage up front, which I have a lot of luggage. Right. So, so here's that up front. Yes. They're putting it out there. Any naysaying like we're doing, it's just like, look, this is our first shot. Right. We'll, we'll yeah. make it bigger and better. Right. We just sure. want to oh, sell yeah. it to everybody. And, and right now, right now, as far as I'm concerned, that truck is IZOD. It's it's yes. it's Starbucks it's, coffee. It's like the newest, neatest thing right. in the upper end neighborhoods. Sure. It was the new Audi R8. It was the whatever. Now it's the all electric F150. Aren't I cool? I, wow, I'm such a negative jerk uh, today. Yeah. But you know what? There's a lot of truth to what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. We all know right. sure. there's going to be a whole ton of people purchasing it because just like just like me, right. I've got the new well, electric they, they, truck. Like, that just can't like that, just crap. like the Humvees I mean, when they when they made them miles. available, you go out and buy one. Is it practical? No. But no. did you but buy you one, one because it was cool? Yeah, right. sure. Right. Well, they were taking deposits, hundred dollar deposits. That was the original deal. Hundred dollar deposit to be in line on this truck. Oh, on the oh on the truck. And, and they got 20,000 in one day. That'll in, do. In one day. One day. Wow. 20,000 wow. people who put game on And probably, and probably most of them were the East Coast people who were just affected by the pipeline going down. And they, Especially they, they, and they asked them, them would you, would you consider buying an electric car now that you've been stranded by the pipeline? And they all, 40% of, of them course. said yes. Yeah. Which is which is a lot like the same people they probably asked. What happened I live when in the North, electric grid goes down? Right, exactly. You know, when I lived in North, I lived in Northridge, you know, right before the earthquake right. in 94. And they asked a bunch of people yeah. would you would you you know are you going to live here oh no i'm out of here you know and it's like i bought my house that's there. when you buy mm -hmm. yeah that's when you buy because everybody else is going out you want to come in so it could break off it's the same kind of you said could break off of the island yeah yeah, yeah. No, your house has now been stress test exactly yeah. Yeah. stress been stress relief stress so, so anyway the, the point is is like you know it, what we're really talking about is energy availability so and and it's all it's all vulnerable right you know the fuel well, pipelines are vulnerable. The, the electric right. good is vulnerable. So you just have to deal with that. I don't right. want to get into survivability things right. and stuff like that. I'm not well, going to hunker down. But I have a question. I mean, I have a truck, and I use it all the time. But I don't usually go. Like, you know, I've got vehicles that go. I've got a, a, my wife has a Honda Accord hybrid that goes 570 miles on a charge, hmm. or, you know, on, a, on a tank. On a tank. Say, on a tank, yeah. excuse me. So I don't drive my truck 300 miles usually. I mean, you may if you're towing, if you're race cars or whatever. But in terms of around town, moving stuff around like most people do with trucks, I mean, we're kind of a different group. Do you go over 230 miles in a, in I a day? I would venture yeah. that a very intelligent and wise and smart company like Ford, besides wanting to push forward with their agenda yes. <laughs> of electricity in all your homes yeah. to be cool, because oh. that's what you want right now. Um has also probably done tons of studies and found from questioning people, I'm guessing, but I'm sure Ford did this, found that most people that own pickup trucks use them within a certain mile right. radius. Right. That, that was actually in the press release. That was in the press release. Work that was in the press release. Home, yeah. Right. And and their truck fit that parameter. Right. Or right, that was exactly. a, that was probably a benchmark they needed the truck to be able to Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you usually load in the back? Well, almost nothing. Half the time, I put right. some two by blankets. Force in it. Yeah. Right. right. So, do you ever really load it down with ten thousand pounds? Probably two percent of them do. Right. Right. So, the average F one hundred and fifty owner that likes a really nice truck with leather interior and all that stuff mm -hmm. probably never weighs it down. Now, right. so them worried about it draining the charge. 
Yeah. You know, I know, again, it. Ford people just, especially execs, just call me and say, you're being a jackass, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> but look, I'm, I'm spinning it around to common sense. Yes. I understand you probably pre-planned and found out that your truck will fill the parameter of probably over 90% of the people who currently own an F-150 and what they really do with the truck. This would probably be able to go... Right. Shell game in the in the in their yeah. driveway, and besides right. having to plug it in, probably yeah. never feel a difference. And, and they can get the juice and send it back to their home. Is right. that that? And, fact, and there's fact? actually there there's that? actually on the pro model truck, they're actually including chargers, you know, quick chargers. So you in can the run vehicle. your house off of the truck. Right. Oh, oh, and actually charge the battery back up too, and they give you charging rights and everything so else. So, what is because my curiosity? What is the pro model? Would that be considered your upper lariat or your, yeah, your yes, high end correct. version? I'm, I'm assuming so. So correct. it's loaded and super nice leathers, yeah. and yeah. comes with its own yeah. self running yeah. chest kit. I, I had, I had okay. a friend ask me. We were talking about it, and I said, "Well, you know, I just don't think the range is there for me for stuff like something that I would like to do." And he goes, "Well, what do you use it for?" I said, "Well, I use it like a truck. I I, I just haul fenders back from my high school car. Got painted at Santini." drug them back from from orange county yesterday i'm going to go back down there next wednesday and pick my chassis up i'm going to tow the trailer down there with the bo- with the frame drop the body on we should probably shoot video and we can talk about Do that, that. and and uh, i'm actually using yes of course <laughs> and <Shameless>. and uh <laughs> yeah he also sent me the bill too which was not you know, a plug but i've already been i've already been paying on it so it wasn't too bad it was yeah. actually very very generous so um I He's use it be as a, a real point, vehicle. So. Yeah, I actually use <laughs> well, it as one a would real the truck, towing vehicle. This electric truck would be a real towing vehicle. It could. I'd, I'd have to do them. Let's see. Out, down. It's probably. Well, I could probably do uh, 200, 200 miles, probably a round trip, something like that. Towing. A little less. That was the, that's the distance I'll oh, be yeah. doing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, down so, the So, yeah. 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 No, I'm not. It's not even you know, close to 10,000 pounds, so it might actually work in a situation like well, that. Well, you know there what? You it's always fun to stop in a neighborhood Target and plug in and just walk <laughs> around and buy some, you know, candy corn and underwear. So, right, yeah. right, right. There you go. So, <laughs> Do you get the same I mean, start? I'm, I'm, yeah. I think just like anything else, there's a market for it. There are people who will who'll, who'll be interested in it and, and I, want it, and, right. and it will certainly have well 775 foot pounds of torque yep. at the moment you touch the throttle oh, right? yeah. there's not a gasoline engine in the on the planet that will do that right you know you oh, gotta I get up what to 4, I said, rpm I think to get it'll, peak torque right. 90 some Boy. percent of the current people that own f-150s they could shell game it and so, never feel so, a difference because i have towed with a like a like a ford turbo diesel and yeah who that was fun yeah, going yeah. up the grapevine Passing cars, pulling a four thousand pound a trailer, pulling a trailer with a four thousand pound race car on it. It yeah. was like this is fun. So you would hey. be able to do that with this because this right. probably even has equivalent torque. Hey, I would hey, say. Hey, yeah. speaking of people who have towed a lot of things, mm-hmm. uh, I have a guest that I'd like to see if we could bring him in here. Cool. Yeah. 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 All, All right. All right. I'm cool. gonna I'm gonna step aside for the first section fair enough because he's your guest and then i'll raz him later okay you got it cool but, uh, yeah we'll, we'll be right back me. with uh mike ryan and uh we'll tell you what mike does when super we come back super cool so one of the things i like to do is always assemble an engine with arp bolts and it's not just because they're sponsors but because it really does work um and and the stuff is fantastic i never have to worry about it steve you building building cars too yeah uh actually it's part of my baseline design plan when i'm building a car that's going to be shown or mm-hmm. featured in a magazine it's part of the plan right to have that little bit of diamonds all over the engine bay or in the suspension yeah yeah, the stuff is beautiful. I remember uh, a long time ago, I built the uh, first time I ever touched it, 69Z28. All of the uh, water jacket holes had stripped out, yeah. and I learned about ARP studs. So check them out at arp-bolts.com or check out their catalog. You'll find everything you're looking for. So we'd like to thank our sponsor, Automotive Touch-Up. Um, I've actually used this stuff on many occasions. We, we built a little 64 El Camino. We actually painted the interior, the dash on it, a steel dash. It worked out really well. It's a two-part deal, and it works very well both as touch-up and or as a small parts that you want to paint themselves. And yeah. I can attest to if you follow directions and do it right, I had my first two, three magazine feature cars, one of which was a top 10 car and a cover car, Tons of parts were done with rattle can because I didn't have the money or the connections to have it fancy painted with a real paint gun. So I've used rattle can paint to build full feature cars. So get to work. 
Yeah, and I use it for rock chips when you're driving cars. Obviously, they get stone chips and such, and those are they make a, a perfect match. I mean, what you do is you go online, you put in your information about your car, and they will match exactly your paint code, which is very cool. So you're not kind of guessing. You are getting exactly getting what you code. asked for. Yeah, right. right. So check them out at AutomotiveTouchUp.com. Welcome back to Car Guy Confessions with my uh, buddies Jeff Smith. Uh, Steve is uh, taking a break for a minute because I brought in a friend of mine. Steve will be back later, so don't tune out. But uh, <laughs> a friend of mine that I've known for 28 years. I think that's our kids are 30. Uh, they wow. were preschool together. 31 so, pretty soon. 31. Yeah, so yeah. I've known, yeah, long time. Yeah. Long time. And a uh, very good friend of mine. And uh, if you have ever been to the movies, uh, You've seen this guy. You may not recognize the face, but if you've seen a movie with any stunts in it, you're probably seeing something that uh, that uh, Mike was involved in. I know that's pushing it a little bit because there are a lot of movies, but the bottom line is that his filmography is so vast. Uh, I mean, I think about some things like you. You told me that you were in Terminator Two. You drove. The, you drove really? the truck. You yeah. drove the truck in the in the oh, okay. wash. That was him. That uh, turned my career. Was that the one? Yeah, that really? was the one. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, and Steve and uh, Mike is just about to uh, go on the road for four months potentially. Seemingly so. We've yeah. got a uh, the first film is called The Gray Man, and um, I leave in four or five days from now. That's in Prague to go to Prague and then Prague. The Czech. Rep I guess it's called Czechia now, right? Okay. The Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia. Good fool me. There you go. Um, yep. So that'll be until late July, and then supposedly go straight to Montreal and begin the next Transformers wow. film. Right. Um, and we're doing Montreal, New York, and uh, Cusco, Peru, apparently on the road up to Machu Picchu, which is a whole lot like Pikes Peak, I think, but maybe a little more sketchy. Yeah. Right? Now, which, which is a good point. You have driven Pikes Peak, correct? A couple of times. A couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I heard that. Times. I heard that. 19 times. 20 times. 20 so, times. So, so, so do we have a Pikes yeah. Peak story? Oh, my gosh. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> truly 20. I ran it 20 uh, times over 21 years. Man. But but the key is, what were you driving? Well, I started on a on a motorcycle okay. yeah. back when it was dirt mm -hmm. because a couple of buddies of mine said, hey, you got to come up Let's here. Let's do this. And I was kind of a mid-pack finisher in the open amateur motorcycle class. So, you know, I was just there to have a good time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there was a guy named Sid Compton that showed up in 1997 in a racing semi-truck. And the only time I'd ever seen one was, <laughs> I think, on the beginning of Smokey and the Bandit when they were at Atlanta Motor Speedway or something. Okay. And they were mostly stock trucks that the guy set the trailer in the parking lot, and they went on track, and they were Chasing lapping around. these trucks. Yeah. And, but this was a full-on hot rod racing semi-truck, which was certainly a transformer all by itself. You right, know? And, right. And it just made this thunderous noise all the way up the canyon. And I'm <laughs> on the motorcycle going, oh, i got to get that truck. Because <laughs> somewhere in my career, probably Terminator 2, uh, that and, and Thelma and Louise, I quit, didn't quit. But the industry turned me into a truck guy, and I thought I was the race car guy. Uh -huh. But uh, you get pigeonholed sometimes. Right, so, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, it's not I'm, been a bad career, though, for you. I, <laughs> it's I worked out pretty well. I didn't think I would grow up to be a professional truck driver and uh, bus driver, but, <laughs> but it's got some good benefits. But, I mean, wow. you're, you're in everything. I mean, you, the semi, to finish up the deal. So how many years did you run the semi at Pikes Peak? We started in, oh, I'm sorry, I was 95 and 6 on the motorcycle, and Sid showed up in 95 and 96, and I couldn't stand it. You know, the second year, I, he was there with his brother, and this thing was growing. So through a whole bunch of magic, I ended up with a truck in um, 97. So his, that his went truck? through 2016. Yeah. Wow. 16. No, it was a, there was a series called Great American Truck Racing Association. Gator right. was yeah. the nickname. And that ended in 91. And the newest, latest, greatest truck uh, came from a guy in upstate New York, Fred Burroughs, I think it is now. Um, and I had done a shell commercial in this crazy semi truck that looked like a dinosaur. And, and I had a friend that, that I met uh, while we were filming uh, Fire Down Below, the Seagal movie called, uh, yeah, Fire Down Below in Hazard, Kentucky. And this guy owned a big coal mine. And he had monster Caterpillar equipment, like 200 pieces of it. So we were going to build a cat racing truck, and, and I had him all convinced and ran out of time. And so we ended up with this Freightliner thing, and um, 
our first Sid Sid had set a record of fifteen forty eight and change. And Mother's Day weekend, which or Father's Day weekend, which was our practice weekend, mm-hmm. I had him handily beat, and on race day, I broke his record by a minute and eight seconds wow. Wow. in 12 wow. and a half miles. So that was a really good truck. Yeah. yeah no How heavy are these things? Uh, that one was, you know, 11 or 12, maybe. 11, 12, maybe it wasn't pounds. that heavy, but Yikes. 10 anyhow, you know. And no guardrails up there. Not then. No, and Not when you then. go over, it's it's a long way down. As, as yeah. he knows. Yeah, I, I did. The, a, only, the only thing I've ever come close to that was I did the Virginia City Hill Climb a couple of times in my Chevelle. Really? And, and I had never been there when I volunteered to go and, and then watched one of the videos, and it's like from a Mustang. And this guy's turning a corner, and there's no guardrail, and it's just blue sky. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, so like risk is huge and reward is like, you know, you get to tell people that you did it. So <laughs> go, I, I don't they know. Go, Where's Virginia City? Yeah. Because I get that Virginia about Pikes Peak. And, 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 and it's very, it's very cool. It's a great race and it's scary as hell, you know, but, but Pikes Peak is, is even greater now. And now it's paved. But when you started, it was dirt. So half of it was paved and then, then you went to dirt. So you couldn't really set the car up for specifically for just one. It had to be able to do both. Right. So it's a compromise. Yeah. If, oh, and as everything in racing is a compromise, but it was really hard to build a dirt really? pavement car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, I, <laughs> it's kind of just, you just hand me the helmet crazy. and let's go. Yeah. You know? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. So vehicle control is really what you do. That's fascinated me. And, and yeah. you know, you watch just being a little kid watching guys that could slide cars. I don't know what it is about sliding a vehicle, but. I, it brings me greater joy than just about anything I can and, think of. And it's it's astonishing in what, in the in the video that you that Cam sent me, yeah. the the one that I I brought it up earlier, but the three Connex trailers and you're in a big semi tractor and you're or you know and you're about this far away from the Connex trailer and I'm thinking ah that's, uh, you know that's not, I'm not I couldn't do that. There's no way I could do that. Well, well that's why we cut where we did because the <laughs> next time I took the next lap I took out the wing or at least the end plate off of it. But that but, was like the Ken Block thing. I mean that's what you were you know the size matters videos. You have three of them that are all on YouTube that people can watch. But yeah. that was those are just awesome. You know you're jumping and you're spinning and you're chasing and you know you're yeah. Well, it's crazy. To me, Ken Block invented a whole new genre of automotive entertainment. Yes. And because, you know, is racing entertainment or is it racing or is it, you know, without selling some tickets, then mm-hmm. it's not much of anything. Right. And so for Ken Block to be able to kind of pioneer a young YouTube with this great action, I, I just super admirer of his. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to go emulate and see if I could do. What he did in his car, I wanted to see if With I could do in the truck. Oh, I'd say truck. you did it. I'd yeah. say you did it without Absolutely. any question. I mean, the stuff that you did is is truly amazing. I mean, the Thank one you. down in Long Beach was with the jump and the whole bit. I mean, it's it's crazy. So it's there's crazy. probably some young guys out there watching this thing and thinking, how do I get involved with this? How how do you get involved with that? Or, or how, how did you start? Yeah, how did you start? And and then yeah. what happened? What's According it? to my mom, I took a wrong turn. I was going to be an architect. <laughs> Well, that's, that's a good a, profession. That's a pretty serious plan. <laughs> <laughs> might have got backwards. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, you know, well, sitting in this beautiful race car shop here and seeing some 67 and 8 Camaros, and I think there's a 9 over here as well, um, I was, uh, long story, I ended up doing my junior year uh, of high school in Corona Del Mar, Newport Beach. Okay. And... A guy had a car for sale. It was a, turned out it was a '67 SS RS four-speed Camaro that I paid sixteen hundred and fifty bucks for. Nice. But when you're eighteen years old in the '70s, that that was like sixteen thousand right. or, or, or at least sixteen million, maybe. Sure. But anyhow, I sold everything and did everything I could do to get this car. And there was a place in Garden Grove called Street Customs Limited, and you could go get wheels, which I think were maybe American racing wheels mm-hmm. at the time and fender flares and those chrome bar grills and that, that <laughs> hid the headlights and all that stuff. Yeah. So I was over there and, and here's six Camaros lined up and they were orange with eight balls on the door. And Ronnie Howard did a movie back in the seventies called eat my dust. Right. Oh, right, right. So I'm going, Holy shit. Those are those cars. Yeah. And I had just seen the movie at the surf theater in Huntington beach and I was, I, I thought it was a holy grail. I'm climbing all over these things and bothering the poor owner of that store. And I finally got the guy's name that owned them. 
And he lived up in the San Fernando Valley, and I immediately drove up there. There's no cell phones or anything. I just drove up and knocked on his door and said, hey, and in my Camaro. So that, that made me legitimate, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. And, uh, and he was a stunt guy that did all these um, kind of low-budget uh, Roger Corman uh, independent feature films okay. where okay. you're the – you go find the cars, you go prep the cars, you get the cars to set, and then you become the stunt guy. And so it's just a hat-changing <laughs> process. But um, I would drive up on my days off, uh, which was a long way, like mm. 70 oh, yeah. miles or something, oh, yeah. and work for free. But because <clears throat> you end up being the mechanic guy that's mm -hmm. under the car, right? You always get to undo the transmissions and hold them on your right, chest. You don't right. get to oh, do yeah. all the very tune ups and that, stuff. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, um, but we, we would go out and I'd help him set up ramps and he wanted to try something. Then I, every now and then I get a chance to drive? do a little jump or yeah. drive, try to learn how to drive a car on two wheels. And, and, uh, and I just became addicted to the idea that somebody would pay me Monday through Friday to do what I would have spent my normal paycheck doing on the weekends. Yep. There you go. Exactly. Because so I think once yep. you get this car thing in your blood, mm -hmm. right. you're stuck. Well, some of the stuff that, you know, just kind of, we didn't quite dive into your, your filmography of stuff that you've done. But, I mean, you were Fast and Furious 3 through upcoming 10. Are you, you were involved in that? Well, 5. 5. Done 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, which gets released uh, in next time week, for this. Think, yes, right? exactly. Um, Rumor is that we're going to do 10 and 11 okay. back to back. No, really? My, my boss doesn't want to do that. He uh -huh. doesn't want to jam them together. Uh -huh. But um, maybe as soon as so next you're game spring, for that. We'll, you're, uh, you're up for that? Oh, yeah. i got to finish this. <laughs> if they're going to end it at 11, i got to see it through. There you go. There you go. But we've I'll got probably be in a cane or a walker by then. There you <laughs> go. Exactly. You were involved with uh, there's uh, Rob Deerduck's uh, spiral jump, the one that he did in the Chevy. You guys built the entire stunt and uh, and did that. That's the one that some folks will notice. Uh, you know, they will remember that. It was the the spiral jump, like in the old James Bond movie, where he goes over the goes over the river. I can't remember what that was. was one the of those man with Roger, the golden gun. Roger, yeah. Yeah. Roger, yeah. Roger, Roger Moore in an AMC yeah. right, um, right. Hornet. I think right. it was. Yep. Yeah, but you exactly. guys recreated the thing and. Uh, I uh, got it to work, uh, and that was quite the quite the technology uh, effort that you guys put together. I've, um, you know, we're in a room full of a bunch of car guys, and I'll bet you we all are pretty good hands in a car, and we can all do a lot of things. I've, I've kind of wanted to know, learn how to do something that nobody else could do. How do you set yourself apart? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a car guy. Well, so is everybody else, right, you know. Right. So um, I've always been fascinated in in. You know, that's the whole reason for the truck. Can, I, right. I can do it in a car. I wonder if I could do it in a truck. So, of course, I saw that James Bond movie as a, as a pretty young guy then. I think I was still in high school. And um, we got a phone call to uh, ask if we could do this. And I'd been very fascinated about it, and I'd collected Hot Rod Magazine, had a big article on it, and... Um, and I just learned all about it. And then a guy named Jay Milligan in New York, in Buffalo, New York, actually was the thrill show company that um, did that. And he used uh, New York State University, I think. I might have that wrong, but whatever the college in Buffalo is. Think about 1970-era computer and what it could do. And I think it was just a single line. I can't speak computer, but it was pretty basic. Uh -huh. But they figured out, you know, mass velocity, this spiral trajectory to get it back on its wheels. Mm -hmm. And um, and they did it at the first, I think it was at the Astrodome, the, the first time in front of public. Really? Okay. And um, I don't remember all the stats now, but there were only, there was an IndyCar racer whose name, I, he wasn't a necessarily a famous IndyCar racer, but he was the first guy to try it. Mm -hmm. And it terrified him. Apparently, he he uh, he found the bottle and nursed it pretty hard. <laughs> kind of like the uh, Daffy Duck cartoon where he says, "This is a great job. It's a great <laughs> trick, but I can only do it once." Right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then there was a um, there was two other guys, and we had uh, Jimmy Canton, who had done it more than anybody, but he did not do the Bond piece okay. in Thailand. Um, but we, I flew Jimmy Canton down. He was 82 years old wow. and, and I was, i raced in two, the, the, that's why it took, uh, 21 years to do 20 times at Pikes Peak in 2011. I did the Mount Washington hill climb with the truck, mm. yeah, which nice was like going a hundred miles an yeah, hour on the sidewalk. On that. It's pretty crazy. terrifying. Um, 
But I stopped in Buffalo, New York. And of course, I had my race truck and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So again, that kind of makes you a little bit legitimate. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to Jay Milligan, who was in his 80s by then. But he had this little museum. And they built this Hornet. It was pretty fascinating. They took an inline six-cylinder. They put the driver's seat over the tunnel, moved the steering wheel in the middle of the car. But they had the car balance left to right and front to back. And they went through all this okay. pretty fascinating technology. Um and he had these old wooden ramps that was the skeleton of this stuff laying mm-hmm. in the parking lot. So I, he let me measure and take pictures. And he goes, you know, nobody's ever done this before other than us. And it's been 35 years. The yeah. French guys tried it, and that guy went to the hospital. And, <laughs> you know, Top Gear tried it, and that didn't work. And yeah. Really? So and they I, tried I, it? I, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I said, well, you know. We've got Chevrolet's money. We're going to make this work. <laughs> right. yeah. It was a Chevy Sonic. Chevy Sonic, yeah, which like, was the introduction which is, of this little wind-up you know, yeah. car, mm-hmm. but a little Kano car. Cool. Yeah. But, uh, so the, it, so yeah, I had not thought of that before, but balancing it left to right is pretty critical. Well, to get... And, and, and nose to tail as We've well. all thrown a football and seen it wobble through the sky. Right. And so there right. was some legitimacy to having a, a, a balanced yeah. spiral. Um, or like when you watch guys try and jump their truck and it goes boom like that and then because they're all very nose heavy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You need a yeah. lot of bricks in the back seat. Right. <laughs> but, but you would, but you also took this vehicle and you had to make it uh, basically uh, aut- aut- it had to be able to do it on its own because you were taking a non stunt guy. We won't say too much about that, but anyway, and teaching him, putting, making the car do the act regardless of what the driver did. Well, I thought it was going to be easy. So we went out and copied Jay Milligan's ramps right. by the millimeter. And uh, they were built for a 1973 AMC Hornet yeah. mm-hmm. with about this much suspension travel. Yeah. And a Chevy Sonic has about this much suspension travel. And the engine and the whole drivetrain's in the front, mm-hmm. you know, so it's this front-wheel drive car. And the wheels leave the ramp while most of the car is still over the ramps and then you've lost your drive. And so right. there were so many things that changed. We ended up uh-huh. having to rebuild that ramp, I don't know, three or four times. Right. And the client was getting pretty frustrated that kept sending bills for, you know, can't you, can't you guys figure this out? And mm-hmm. it was pretty embarrassing. And we were at Magic Mountain parking lot, I think seven different times. Right. So to go rent this parking lot, set up these ramps, we bought so many cardboard boxes. Yeah, they crashed imagine. into cardboard boxes. Which uh, is okay. Pretty, yeah. f- pretty, pretty fun. fun to which, is, yeah. cars. which is a good idea, actually, yeah. so you don't oh, destroy the car. Works yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you line them all up and tie ropes around them and put uh-huh. some tarps on them and some box flats and you can kind of yeah. create almost like a shock absorber. A cushion, you right. You have rear, medium, mm-hmm. and well done as right. you, you <laughs> dig deeper. There you go. Because uh, everything's worked. softer than pavement. And, mm-hmm. you know, yes, yes. So. But it worked. It, it you, did. You were and able so, to make it happen. Um, we ended up, there was, I think James Smith and I are, um, have done it, I think we're the number six and seven or seven and eight guys that have ever done that. And oh, Rob Deerdeck right. is nine uh-huh. and, yeah. uh, wow. and did a hell of a job, you know, and you can tell right away uh, if somebody hesitates, it's already done. Mm-hmm. It's failed, yeah. you know? And so the guy, maybe it's from being a really good skateboarder, but he um, did not hesitate. And so to his credit, he, he, he made it. He didn't yep. <clears throat> at one point on the, up the ramp, because the left side drops out. Mm-hmm. So you, you run a set of parallel ramps up for, I don't know, three feet, mm-hmm. maybe more. And then the left side drops out and the right side keeps going. And then you get to just the center of the axle where we put a caster on it. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like doing a, you know, when you're a diver or something and you're trying to do a, a, a turn. To rotate. Uh, rotate. Uh-huh. You end up putting one hand to your chest to right. kind of pick up and change your center of rotation. Mm-hmm. And so that was the magic trick that, that Jay never shared with anybody. It was this center caster. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And so as the left ramp fell out, there was a center ramp. So now you got the right wheels on that track and then this center caster. Mm-hmm. And that allowed you to, to uh, flip accelerate yeah. the rotation. Okay. Right. right. And all this, you know, I was saying earlier, I... I I've learned physics from the wrong way. I, I <laughs> totally blew it in the classroom and I've learned it by practical experience. Right, but right. Crazy. Now I want to go back and right. learn it properly. But well, uh, well, something else that you did, and, and people who watch Fast and Furious um, or know the series, there's a, um, a scenario where a couple of guys with chargers, the bad guys with chargers, pull a 
vault out or the safe out of the wall in a bank and then proceed to drag it across a bridge. You know, you said you were in Puerto Rico. Is that where this actually yeah, happened? San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. So basically there is this, this, uh, they're, they're pulling, they're pulling this, uh, this safe and destroying everything in its path. I don't know mm-hmm. whether you've seen that particular deal, but well, it's crazy. Bouncing off cars. Bouncing off of cars right, and the whole right. bit. But And we have the video from, from, your, from your, your reel here that shows that that safe, and you've mentioned a couple other things about that. Can you go into the detail of what that whole, that that whole thing was? kind of a real deal. It wasn't a real safe, but it was fabricated out of quarter wall. Um, what was that? I think it had four by four corners or three by four corners, but it was really heavy and then mm. just steel plates. So it's an eight foot square cube, mm. probably weighed, I don't know, two, three, 4,000 pounds. <laughs> We're dragging it. I'd probably got a 50 foot tether off the back of these chargers. Maybe I think we ended up shortening it because it was too much and it was yanking the chargers around too much. Yeah, um, in fact, there's the scene in my demo reel it has me going backwards as much as I was going forwards. <laughs> because you're driving this this barricade on the front of a semi, so you're driving. This, well, no, this was the this was with actually the chargers the same. pulling the box out pulling from just underneath pulling, the. So that's the initial okay. scene. But then, as you go along, you, there is a deal, and and again, we've got the video where you can see that. The, the safe is actually a truck, and it's got a, a front piece on it that is the safe. Basically, the, mm-hmm. it, it is. And it'll all be taken out in post, but but that's how you're crushing all these cars because right. you're driving a truck into them. The special effects guys were very intelligent. They took uh, a couple of Freightliner semi tractors, uh, took the hood off, cut the roof off. So now you got this Roadster mm-hmm. semi tractor. And they uh, skewed the vault a little bit, canted it left on one of the trucks and canted it right on the other so we could work both sides of the street and kind of shunt the cars in the direction that camera wanted them to go. go. So it was kind of like a, you know, holding your golf club correctly, mm-hmm. you know, just your angle of attack. You play a lot uh, of golf, right? I've never played around the <laughs> golf in my life. I knew that. I knew it's like that. almost That's like a, a giant faded. snow plow, right? Just well, it's just things this, out of the way. Just a steel wall yeah, coming at you, yeah. and and. You know, of course, they stripped the cars that we hit mm-hmm. primarily. No that way they um, would react quicker. Well, lighter. And you wouldn't tear up as much. You, you know, right, the right. engines and those heavy concentrations of weight of mass yeah. change where the vehicle's going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? If it starts spinning, you know, the tail wags the dog kind right, of thing. Right. So, um, but they were just shooting cars at the truck, and I was just lined up and taking them out. And then we had cables where when I went forward, they went forward. So I was. I, as I progressed, I'm pulling the cars towards me. And we had this kind of, it looked like a sprint car roll cage with plexiglass all over it. Because so I'm, I'm of, looking over this bank vault, right? Whoa. It's eight feet high. Whoa. And so <laughs> kind of sitting way up in the seat, you know, got up the air ride right. seat jacked mm-hmm. all the way up so I can see over it. And then these cars come and you're trying to duck out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so large pieces coming at you? Yes. A couple times oh, they went over man. the top. Yeah. Did you, wow. Did you, you ever injured in any of these things? Were you uh, nicked up from you know cars no, flying over? That's good. Wood. No, that, no uh, shrapnel sorry. wounds, huh? <laughs> no. Well, I uh, I did break my scapula in a couple places rehearsing the bus rollover for Fast Seven at, ah, over okay. at Hollywood Park, but I'm not right. allowed to talk about that, so you didn't <laughs> okay. hear it from me. <laughs> okay. But you're also uh, you also do things like. Um, Rolling over streetcars and things of that sort, but we won't talk about. Can't talk that. about. Okay, the sure enough. Much. All right, well, the future is is unwritten, as wow. they say. Uh, I mean, there's also something I remember you talking about talking about getting hurt. You, there is a uh, an unbelievable video of you driving a, a tractor with a with a trailer on it over a Formula One car that tucks underneath you, and there is video of you kind of rattling around in the cab. And uh, I remember you said that was... That was the one. That one hurt. Yeah, that yeah. was the one. So back to that stunts that I nobody ever did before that I wanted to figure out how to do and survive right. through. Right, right. Um, had this amazing client, EMC, which got absorbed by Dell or Hewlett Packard, and I apologize for not knowing that. Um, <clears throat> but they were the one of the largest banking um, file server. Like, they owned this monstrous chunk of the cloud Um, and they were a sponsor of the lotus formula one team so i told them i because i did a couple of other smaller jobs for them and i said you know they go well what do you want to do and i said well i want to jump a semi truck i've i've never i've crashed them i've flipped them i've i've done everything you can do in one yeah i said but i've never jumped a truck i've jumped a bazillion cars 
fortunately got trained by a guy named Buzz Bundy who had spent 27 years of his life on the thrill show circuit. Good guy. Wow. He did like the New York World's Fair where he's jumping cars, I don't know, like 4,000 times over the year. Wow. You know, So they, these guys had the ability to master these things and get them down to incremental, you know, yep. bet you I can land on the quarter kind of wow. thing. And so, and, and that's really our world. A lot of people can go, you know, have a beer and take off and, and go do this stuff, but to do it in front of camera on a mark at the right speed when they tell you to when and land in so. the right place. And right. I mean, this is all a lot more about science and technology than it is about testosterone. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out how this stuff works or how to make it work is, is, is actually the fascination for me. I love the engineering of, of it. You bet. Um, but you were able, I mean, so the deal is that this truck goes off a ramp and it, right next to it at that point is a formula one car um any significant individual driving that car um well you've, you've seen martin ivanov a whole bunch yeah. doubling james bond in the okay. last few james bond movies so this guy can drift aston martins and do all that kind of stuff on cobblestones in london wow yeah. and uh <laughs> so he's a russian time. he's the son of a russian rally car racer and he was a rally car racer so we flew Martin in from Good Moscow. practice. Wow. And, um, you know, to find a, 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 as I understand it, by the time you've got a new fresh Formula One car on the track, that's sneaking up on a half a billion dollars in 2014 wow. money. I don't doubt it. So uh, this was the 2012 car. Just that Good junky thing. thing laying in the shop, you know. That's uh, right. Old spares. Technology. Spares. <laughs> but I uh, I have an accident reconstruction <laughs> engineer friend, um, Ed Fattenzer, who was down in Orange County, and Ed's got this phenomenal software. So, it, and it's really just mass and velocity and trajectory. Mm -hmm. But I was using the old school thrill show, you know, stuff. Buzz taught me about one mile an hour equals three feet if you're going off a ten or eleven degree ramp and okay. blah 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 during, uh, but only in a certain window of speed. Mm -hmm. And um, so you kind of extrapolate to come up with your number, but. Ed was able to put it in because he goes to courtrooms and testifies, you know, car A did this and car B did that. Right. Um, and so we modeled this thing with, you know, seat of the pants and with some present day modern um, technology. And we were both very close. We were within a couple, th I think we were a mile, really? or, mile or two, wow. an hour of each wow. other and ramp wow. angles and distances. Um, but, you know, Martin's underneath me in a Formula One car. And I don't want to drop a 35,000-pound semi-truck on my buddy. You yeah, know, it involves a certain that, amount of trust. Right. Yeah. 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 And, right. you know, that was my main concern mm -hmm. through the whole time. And the kind of the last thing, that this was my st mistake, actually. The last thing I thought about was myself. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about me, but I spent more time thinking about his safety and what are we going to do and how are we going to do this. And yeah. Um, How fast were you going out of curiosity? 71 miles an hour is all wow. we could get out of that truck. Yikes. That's it. Huh? I that would have it. liked another five just to yeah. have that, you know, insurance well, I, policy. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you can go faster than, a, than that in a semi. Certain trucks. Yeah. Certain <laughs> trucks. I've seen you. Yeah. I've seen you. Okay. Um, 71 is not, yeah, it's not even, the, not even in the window. <laughs> but um, we, uh, we got a Guinness world record for being dumb enough to jump a truck in a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the bottom line is you'll see the video. He's going off the top, and the Formula One truck is going underneath. Formula One car. Yeah, I'm sorry, so car. Yeah. yeah, sorry, not truck, but going underneath and completely clearing before the yeah. truck comes down. Yeah. And there can't well, have been that much room. The video suggests that the car entered from the right side and kind of crossed in sort of a diagonal and exited the left side as the truck jumped through the mm -hmm. middle or right. over the middle. Right. <clears throat> we didn't have enough speed, and so uh, we all decided that he was just going to come in there at the end of the ramp and hook a left and spin out because okay. that's the least amount of time under the truck. Under the truck. Mm -hmm. And then we, before we jumped the truck, we did a, another shot where he's parallel the truck as if, as if the truck's he's landed and they leave the shot okay. side by side. So uh, it was absolutely real that we jumped over the car, but we didn't do it the way you see it mm -hmm. because we wanted to save Martin. Right. Um, and, we, you know, they kind of wanted to save their car, too. Yeah. But, but yeah. You're, you were damaged in this. In the, as this thing comes down, you can see in the video that you're moving around pretty good in the cab. Well, that, you know, I keep 
um, speaking about physics, and and this has been, I think this is my 44th year in the stunt business, and I'm still such a kindergarten student when it comes to understanding this mass and where it goes and, and cause and effect and all of that. Um, we designed the truck because, you know, I was worried about a truck that bends, mm -hmm. right? Truck and trailer. So here the tractor goes up the ramp, but now the trailer is pushing and then the tractor leaves the ramp and the trailer is still on the ramp, but the drive wheels have already left. So how much drag is that? What mm -hmm. happens if the tractor wow. bends wow. and then the trailer pushes it and, and goes into the, the tractor into the, track, in, into the and, ramp? And yeah. so we did a lot of work to make that more like a bus where mm -hmm. it was just one unit. I, uh -huh. I had it where the tractor could flex up to climb the ramp. Mm -hmm. But when it left, it flew very level because okay. we cross braced it and strapped it and did all this kind of stuff to mm -hmm. I also didn't want it to jackknife if I were if I'd gone off one side of the ramp and hadn't hit it square mm -hmm. didn't want the trailer to come around and smack me when the tractor was dead and yeah it's because all these things you don't know a lot of stuff going on um and I have a, a custom built Butler NASCAR full containment uh race car seat like the guys would use at Daytona mm -hmm. or Talladega with the halo and the shoulders and the thighs and the, the right. rib cage and right. all of that stuff mm -hmm. And I, I went to Butler Build, and they custom built the bottom of it for me, and they called it their monster truck bottom. So uh -huh. it's got, like, three layers of different densities of foam, and mm -hmm. it's much deeper than a cup car seat. So it will progressively compress. Yes. Yeah. And um, we also, uh, from the roll cage to the floor of the cab, put a pair of parallel tubes, rods, pipes, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. and made uh, on the back of the seat, I had these kind of, fists that would grab that pipe so mm -hmm. now the seat can move up and down on these rails oh okay so i hung it from the ceiling with a bunch of heavy duty aircraft landing gear you know little small bush Struts. plane uh bungee cords oh, like oh bungee cords really five eight inch thick bungee wow. cord so we took a few wraps on both sides uh we had the air ride base from the truck you know uh -huh. that, that raises and lowers then i also had myself in a harness with um hanging to the ceiling so we, we do that a lot so you don't compress your back. And okay. of course, you'd like to lay back as far as you can so that you're not vertically stacking your vertebra. Mm -hmm. If you lay back, you can kind of spread some you of that spread energy. spread the load out, yeah. So it's kind of an odd seating arrangement uh -huh. in there. Um, but that was my mistake is I didn't put my own air supply on the air ride seat base. I didn't understand how much G-forces my body would go through and... All these accident guys talk about the accident the vehicles have, and then they talk about the accident the people have people with inside. the vehicles. Yeah, inside. And so yeah. um, that ended up doing uh, uh, compression fractures of three discs in my lower back mm. and three discs in my neck, which I just had those discs replaced uh, less than a month ago. So you pulled some Gs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you pulled some jeans. And that video shows me just being absolutely ragdolled. Yes, wow. absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're you're kind of all over the place there. But but, I, but you have through the years gone through quite a bit of repair on your body. How many how many broken bones altogether? Forty four. Forty four <laughs> broken bones. This is an evil Knievel style deal, but much smarter. I you know, would never compare the two. So that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of repair. That's a lot of heel time. Yeah. But that's not from stunt work. I got caught in a wind shear in New Mexico in yes. 1985 in my uh, little biplane uh, crossing over the Continental Divide in yes. the Rockies, uh, um, kind of 30 miles south of I-40. How old were actually. you then? I can't remember how old. 27. I 27. Think. Wow. In a, in a biplane. What kind? A, what kind of plane? It was called a Starduster II. It was okay. a home built biplane. But really. This wasn't the biplane's yeah. fault. Really, it was mm. it was mine. Wind shear. Mountain wave wind shear, um, which is a fascinating thing. I really, they didn't teach a lot of that at Van Nuys where I got my pilot's license. <laughs> and, uh, Not enough big mountains. <laughs> right, yeah, right. But, yeah. but uh, this could have ended everything right then. I mean, you really are a survivor. I mean, you were pinned in the vehicle or pinned in the airplane for how many hours? Oh, I crashed around 1230 in the afternoon and, and it, I don't know how many, I don't know. I passed right. out so many times trying to get out. Cause right. Because his leg was pinned. Right heel was yeah. impaled with the rudder pedal. It went yeah. in the outside and came out the inside. <clears throat> yeah. It's an amazing, <coughs> it's an amazing story that he was able wow. to, and the beacon was what found you, right? I mean, right. The emergency yeah. locator. This is okay. way before cell phones and GPS of course. and all that stuff. Wow. Was, and so, wow. um, yeah. actually when Reagan, I think went to 
meet with Gorbachev, the president of Russia, and they were still in the Cold War, America, mm-hmm. this before the wall got torn down or any of that stuff. They, as presidents of the two superpowers in the world, had to show some kind of camaraderie doing mm-hmm. something. Right. So they decided to arm uh, two Russian spy satellites and one American spy satellite with a SARSAT satellite system, search and rescue satellite Kay. SARSAT. Okay. And um, I was one of the first people that got launched in uh, 1983. Really? And I was one of the per- first people that that thing found alive, that satellite system. Wow. And wow. Um, so I did a lot of work with Search and Rescue, kind of as their show pony for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for the 20th anniversary, uh, they flew me back to Washington, D.C., uh, to the State Department, the top floor of the State Department, and all the heads of all the space agencies in the world were there to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this system that at the time had recovered over 14,000. Wow. I don't know how many alive and how wow. many dead, but it was Amazing. responsible for bringing 14,000 people out of the out of, uh, of water, you know, because it was all boats and, and sure. aircraft sure. Mm-hmm. And, and lost hikers, too, I yeah. suppose. So but they were yeah. tell you, they put you at the top of the State Department and pushed you <laughs> off. Well, they <laughs> thought about it. I wish I was a better, That's right. I wish That's I was right. a better speech giver That's at the right. time, but there's That's a lot right. of tears involved because right. those guys yeah. truly oh, saved yeah. my life. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, I, wow. I, I want to bring Steve back in here because Steve wants to talk with you for a minute here. Steve, uh, whose uh, seat you've warmed up there. So um, uh, we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back with Steve. And with ARP, it's not just a lot of intake manifolds, uh, studs for heads, but they also have a humongous selection of American and metric that we use all throughout the car, even large bolts that we use on the suspension components because you want that same strength, that same durability and reliability Plus the beautiful looks. And the and, stuff outside the catalog. Right. They have a special order program where if you're if you're a builder and you need some special stuff made, they can do that for you. So it's an amazing, amazing company to work with. So check them out at arp-bolts.com or check out their catalog. You'll find everything you're looking for. Well, through the magic of technology, I'm Jeff Smith right now. And welcome to uh, Car Confessions with no me. Hat. No, no, hat. no, no I don't have a hat. No, oh, this is the damn. other version of me that... Okay. Doesn't have a hat. Can you make that into a bun? Probably not, because I won't. <laughs> okay, so I missed the most, imp- it's not the most important thing, but I've, I've watched you reel, and I actually, so do you know Jason Lewis? I do know Jason Lewis. Yeah, see, yes. Jason, there's, see, there's <clears throat> not enough schmoozing going on in the last part of this episode. So everybody go watch anything to do with Jason Lewis, because you worked with him, or vice versa, with your basically your Jim Connor versions of working with your rig, which you guys were talking about before, right? Right, right. Using right. Thor Thorough Good soundtrack there, which you know Absolutely. what a what a perfect, perfect soundtrack <laughs> that was. I applauded Jason. He he says, You gotta check out this thing I just did with this big rig, right? He sent me the clip. I'm like, that's the baddest shit I've seen and I don't know <laughs> when that's the greatest well background why I love, besides the fact that you must carry your balls in a flight case, is that I grew up hanging out with my uncle and he drove big rig and hauled coal from Pennsylvania to New York. Wow. <clears throat> so I, I used to, we used to sit and look in the truck trader and we're going to get a Kentworth sometime with a great Dane trailer, you know, right, and all, right. you know, he had a diamond Rio. Oh, did he really? Yeah. yeah right. And he, uh, he used the CBs, um, um, B Hornet. Right. And had painted on the door and his handle was green Hornet. Oh, that's so, cool. and that's and, really cool. and I was into dinosaurs, so he just called me dinosaur. But I was on the on the CB with him, and it, so I grew up hanging out around a big rig, and 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 so when I saw what you were doing, I was absolutely fascinated because it's all my worlds combined, you know. And then I, I obviously watched more when you were doing Pikes Peak, and uh, I'm very happy you guys you talked about a little bit what happened, but. I am fascinated with, I mean, it clips off the in, in truck cameras when you went over and out. Were you in the wooded area? Did you actually go into trees or did you just go down the? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. It, when, yeah. When, when the, literally, I will politely put it as when shit went bad. That's right. Oh. <laughs> well, when the, when the freight liner became an airplane. It, right. When there it went with an airliner. <laughs> freight liner went airliner. A friend of mine uh, termed it. When the truck got photogenic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares about you? Yeah, I'm never going to forget it. Um, 
Well, if you're that video we keep referring to down at, at the mats and shipping lines in Long Beach, my number two size matters two video, I jumped the truck, um, ramp to ramp, right, uh, right at the end of the video, right, and then I took off and did a movie up in in uh, Vancouver, Canada, and I was gone for I don't know a couple three months, and so my crew got the truck ready and took it to Pikes Peak because right. I flew from Canada to Denver and. Drive right. down okay. to Colorado Springs, and um, we were really. I mean, I've, I'm so. Um, it's so easy to die up there. Yeah. So we were really concerned about the prep of the vehicle. I'm, I'm, I'm just a jerk about it. I mean, I want to make sure that things. Well, is if perfect. you're driving it, you get to be the no, jerk yeah. about it. Trust no, me. I mean, I mean, I've had this great conversation here at ARP, just five about bolts because i would religiously throw away about half the bolts in the truck sure. every year yeah of course and just start with new because i if anything was in jeopardy it got replaced right. um so we were also really good about doing all all the um testing of the front suspension that you know the uh come on help me out here the the green paint that you put on the to, oh yeah I, the, witness mark well, no, to see if there's any cracks. Oh, yeah. The, oh, oh, yeah. I know. Magnaflux. 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 Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we were really religious about that. I had my own Magnaflux kit, and we'd look at it with magnifying sure. glasses, and we were really, really cautious about the okay. front suspension especially. So it right. um, turns out I damaged some welds on the landing of that jump, yeah. and my guys missed it. Tech at Pikes Peak was so used to us having a meticulously prepared truck that they go off. Oh, it's Mike. He's good. So right. tech let me through mm. and I missed it. So it was a spindle. Is that what you're saying? Or well, the weld, the, the axle tube to where the, um, what knuckle? do you call the kingpin knuckle? Oh, the, kingpin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the round sure. barrel so that's welded on. The sure. here that the kingpin yeah, it, slides through? yeah. It was a straight axle that right. was stressed and let go. Right. I mean, and it so was a modified, went... it was a wildly modified axle, but okay. anyhow, <clears throat> damaged a couple of welds. So uh, it's qualifying morning, and I've done a couple of th runs up the up the bottom uh, six miles of Pikes Peak. Okay. And I'm starting to feel pretty good and getting familiar with the truck again. And, and the temperatures are coming up outside, and the tires are starting to hook up. Michelin made us custom tires. It, we've, I think, the only ones ever that we had uh, kind of a Trans Am road racing rain compound on truck casings. Oh, those were, what, they were like 20 inches wide? What were those? The uh, Michelin X1 wide base singles mm -hmm. on the back yeah. and then some 315 something or other 22.5 bust casings on the front mm -hmm. uh, to get as much contact patch as, right, as we could get. Yeah. Um, so everything's working good. The truck's warmed up. Everything's going good. The track's warmed up. You know, it's optimum moment for the truck, and it's qualifying time. So I'm now... Trying to, trying to put You're down a good lap, lap yeah, you know, get it. Mm -hmm. and um, got up to an area. It might have been blue sky. It might have been the turn after that. I don't recall now, but it was a pretty fast left. I'm doing 65 or 70. There's no speedometer in there, okay. but it's an uphill left. That's that's not real sharp. And but it's a, a definitely a turn. And the front left wheel turned left and the front right wheel turned right. And mm. the truck went straight and um it was about it. a, it was probably a, a 25 feet of road elevation above the ground at the toe of the, okay. road, you know, because the it. curves yeah. built up. Right. But then the mountain descended away from that. So Dang. it was about a 40 foot fall from road surface to the bottom. Anything but did you guys see that trees, crouching tiger? Yeah. You? Did you trees. see that crouching tiger movie where the guy's <laughs> going through all the bamboo and yeah, well, the, the pine trees did the same thing. They slowed the truck down. They were snapping off like crazy. In yeah, fact, like I got a branch through the windshield there yeah, and there, and I'm kind of yeah. That should have been fun. Yeah, right it was there. pretty. It was there was a poltergeist moments where yeah. branches were coming through the windshield. But <laughs> wow, but the thing got Jeez. slowed down, and the pine trees flexed, and it brought it with maybe ten or fifteen feet above the ground, and then it then I just landed. Unfortunately, I landed the the engine was pretty much mid engine, it's about as far back as I could get it, and still right. have it. My drive shaft was only two feet long, if that. Right. Um, so I, I cased the motor on a rock, and that mm. tore the oil pump off of the 
mm. the inside webbing of you know where the the crank bearings it keeps are. getting better right yeah, and I so <laughs> I, I wiped out the motor but i don't i don't know this so and right. nobody knows i've gone off the road because i'm below the road and you can't see it but they do have um all the corner workers go well he he's, he's left here yet. but he hasn't shown up oh, here so boy. He's and I'm missing. going, man. This is Thursday. It's qualifying. We got a race on Sunday, so I'm, I got. It. I'm fine. I'm perfectly oh, fine. Well, I well, shut. No, you stop talking. I want to revisit that for a second. You guys rewind that. I just went off a cliff. I just had trees coming through the windshield at my head. A whole bunch of the engine just went up near me. No, no, the engine stayed where it belonged. Oh, yeah, the but other the oil parts. Something went by yeah. by. And your concern is, can I put this thing back together to do it tomorrow? Well, three days later. Okay, same so thing. I'm yeah, clearing no, brush. No, to no, try to I'm going home <laughs> and having a drink <laughs> and not driving the goddamn truck again. You can bleep that out in post. National Audubon Society. Are you out of your... Yes, you, oh, why you, am I asking know, him that question? Yes. Yeah. So that was going through your mind. I am, fa- you know, I am fascinated that yeah. your brain isn't, oh my God, I almost just died. I just went off a cliff. A bunch of trees almost tried to kill me, then saved my life. Your thought is... I got to fix this thing so I can go do this again in a couple of days. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, of course. Lock you up. How many guys do you know? Because everybody in here is racers. Yes. (laughs) I've been married 33 years. Oh, my God. But how many people do you know have had a sponsor for 18 years? Freightliner was my sponsor for 18 years, and Michelin was there for most of that, Mm -hmm. and quite a few others were there for most of that. And so... I don't, you know what? No. I signed up to do this, and I was had every intention. I came there to race. I no, was no, bound to determine I, to put that thing on the line I, Sunday morning. I I salute your responsibility, but I don't know if that would have been my first line of thinking. Well, you didn't hear my dialogue. As, okay, as all that was occurring. <laughs> was it creative cursing on the way down? Oh, it was, or it just was, total silence? No, that was the religious part. Okay, Man. coming together. Then after that, I lost all religion and went straight to hard <laughs> profanity. <laughs> Got a little flip flop in about a minute. But Triumph Motorcycles was uh, just as a weird fluke. Triumph and Castrol um, were spons- one of the sponsors on the truck. Oh, that oh year. get a load of this. And Triumph, Triumph? gives me a get brand ready. new motorcycle. Uh, but Is it was there? a 1200 cc um, adventure bike. Okay. Well, you know, so it was. I got you. Yeah. Dual dual sport. A big dual sport. Okay. And so it had 29 miles on the odometer. The truck was trashed. So it's piled up on the trailer. So you're going to race the motorcycle. And I got permission you? to run the motorcycle right. up the hill. Well, you had the so entry. You know, you got the entry fee paid. Great idea. So what are you going to do? Yeah. You know? You know. <laughs> so I came in last place on the motorcycle, but I made it to the summit. So I feel pretty good about that. Absolutely. Good thinking. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of deep know. breathing up there. That's what, what my mom <laughs> said. Did you, have you been talking? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I and you guys touched on it also, but I'm, a, I'm an F1 fan. So I was fascinated with the Lotus I'm a big Lotus fan. At least, you know, John Player special. That was um, so cool. Oh, yeah. One of the yeah. most beautiful F1 cars job. ever. Yeah. Oh, I, I was at, I got, uh, I went over to Goodwood and, and friends oh, of mine man. through, through ARP. There you I go. went over there with them and, and took me up to classic Lotus where all oh. those cars were stored. Because yeah, that year uh, at Goodwood, that was the marquee. So they had all the John Player special cars out. Mm. And it was just me and the guy that ran the building. I'm just sitting on the Slick Emerson fiddle part of these cars. I'm like, oh, my God. You know. So I saw the video, and I was fascinated. And it was very interesting because I was, I was listening to the side of the stage, you know, when he was talking. that Because I was watching when it showed the, the immediate hook. Right. And I'm like, boy, he looks like he's not going just straight under. But you're right. They edit it and... But right. so, so I'm glad that I kind of noticed, I'm like, something, because man, that, that is a, that's a come to Jesus moment when you're driving underneath an airborne rig. That's got to, I can't I'm, imagine. I'm, I'm, Write I'm, that down. I'm, I'm serious. You too would like to reach I, this I, demographic, I, uh, I, please I advertise <laughs> with Car Guy Confessions. I am, I, 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 I tried to imagine myself under there going, this is, this, I'm having the weirdest day. I mean, what in the world are you do? So you guys had to have a lot of. Little talks, you know. They even brushed at it. There's got to be a lot of trust between you two, or you're oh, just like, ah, hell, have a drink, get well, in the car, and you know, slap again, it, it, it comes the truck. It comes back to, I, I suppose, there's a lot of experience of knowing that the car yeah, jumps sure. work. Right. So once you believe that, faith. It, once you believe that a jump works, it doesn't right. get to the end of the ramp and fall but off. But there was no, there was no, 
jumping that truck a couple of times to see if this idea oh, no. worked. No, that was a that one, was a and, one done. and done. Oh, the thing landed Lord the heaven. engine. It's an inline six diesel engine that that's right. And a I big heard you, lock, you locked it up so it would bend. It would the, the, it didn't, the truck and it trailer would bend going up. But right, you had it relief right. to go up. Right. But going this way, it wouldn't bend down, so it'd right. stay parallel right. and not do some wonky stuff. So, and that was just reinforcement and and straps. Yeah, some big hunk and was 80, it still 80, a trailer, trailer pound, just aluminum trailer? No, it was a car. It was a transporter. It was a transport rig. It was it empty was, in the back. It was empty, I mean, and we no gutted it as much as we could, cars. but it was still heavy. <laughs> yeah, just load it up with it. <laughs> the whole Lotus toolbox. Put some, of, put some of, Fiats in there. Whatever. You, you saw wars. the video. The whole Lotus team was yeah. in there with all <laughs> oh, the yeah. tools and everything. But they were having a great time. <laughs> there you go. Um, there you go. <laughs> sipping some lattes. Well, you know, it was also November sixth. In, in England, North England, so it wasn't exactly a warm day, and you can't get F1 tires warm no matter what you do, tire warmers and all. So for him to have traction was another problem, getting out of the hole. Did they, did they use like a and track warmer? What did you guys no, do for prep? It, it was, you, just you just did that. Just wow. Run I, it. I, I, I can't stress enough. Can't Everybody go watch watch like, his reel, and just, just watch that, let, let alone all the other mayhem he's doing. Watch, watch that again and just go, that was a tractor-trailer airborne and somebody drove under it yeah, yeah but yeah. think about a top and you were going what speed 71 yeah because that's safe all right um <laughs> yeah, yeah well, it was it was posted yeah. limit i mean it it's was safe. you know hey, it's hey, it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> no hey, studs hey. past 72 can you tell us a little bit more anything fa fast and furious wise that uh oh. is well, worth uh, dropping in there i think i can talk about fast nine because um, that's coming out and that's coming out that's popular with steve a car parked in in the very introduction scene do you have it in five oh, so we have another friend with dennis mccarthy yes we do yay dennis i'm My sure hero. he's watching because his My name's hero. getting dropped so our friend Dennis McCarthy is kind of the automotive guy for all the fast movies. Right. I mean, I, it, it's Hollywood magic is a nice way of saying that right. we cheat a lot. Yeah, I know. You know, and so that's not really a 69 Charger. Yeah, I know. You know. When they need um, a nice car, Dennis calls me. Yeah. Oh, you have a nice so, one. So, well, they borrowed Some beautiful a stuff. car we built called Hammer. That was Vin Diesel's car at the very end of three. And then that's the car it's that he dies. They made copies of it in right. four. And then they copied my Torino as the green, the bad guy's oh, no card kidding. for. Uh -huh. And my white Mustang called the Anvil Mustang, that is that gets that's run over by six. the tank. Yes, I was there. That's yeah. The 69. Well, okay. Yeah. So, Dennis, here's a, here's a fun thing to pull away from our amazing guest. So, Dennis is made, of course, copies of our super nice car to get crushed by said tank. Didn't tell me this. Sends me a photo from overseas and just oh, says, beautiful. we've had an accident. <laughs> nice. And this white 69 Mustang that looks pretty much just like the one I built for a customer okay. is flat as a pancake because it got ran over by a tank. And I pretty much went into cardiac arrest. It was all the way flat. I don't it even think flat. there was much no. of a bump it, where the no, engine was. It was no. flat. And I went, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm like going, uh, my brain's like trying to figure out what I'm going <laughs> to even do with, I don't know what. And he goes, I'm just kidding. That's a stunt car. I'm like, oh. You have to rename it. It's no longer the anvil. It's the pancake. Uh, it's, it's the, <laughs> I don't know. It's the paperweight. Scrap metal. Uh, so, so were you part of that tank scene? I was. You I driving was driving the, tank? the sim. No, I wasn't. I wanted to and uh, pol I politics. Wanted to. I wanted to drive a well, tank. Come on. If you get a chance to slide a tank, that's pretty good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd buy that for a buck. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 No kidding. But I got to drive the truck that hauled the tank, which the tank ends up killing the truck as it comes out the front of the trailer, runs right. over the tractor. So um, my stunt double jumped out of the truck because I'm too frail to do it. I've got too many broken bones. Oh, you passed on that one. I did. I'm okay. not jumping wow. out of nothing. Wow. Uh, jumping out of nothing. I'll go over a, I'll go off a mountain, but I'm not jumping off of right. nothing. But he did not all nothing. of the magna fluxing, so it was good. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So so anyway, with fast stuff, and I know there's a lot of sleight of hand and sleight of camera, but it makes for amazing movies. So well, you but did the vehicles that Dennis builds, it may not be the perfect sixty eight or nine Dodge Charger, but oh, but it does its job. Oh man, you, the one he built for Fast uh, Nine, right? The hero, beautiful one. We mm -hmm. had about a, I don't know, eight or ten of them, right? Right. But there's one that's got a Lamborghini Huracan 
No, it doesn't. It's got a Hellcat motor hooked yeah. to a Huracan, which is also an R8 transaxle. Right. With yeah. a, with a fastback yeah, glass nasty. in the back, and you look down and you see all that wonderfulness. Yeah, it's cool. It's really really cool. So did you on all the different fast ones? You were big rig, or like you were talking about before the safes. I'm I'm pretty buses, much I, I'm, big big. I'm vehicle. there to do the big vehicle stuff. I often get stuck in cars to do things. Just because you're there and you're obviously right, knowledgeable. You know, you're supposed to show up at work and do something. So <laughs> sometimes you're just. I'm sometimes I'm just traffic, background traffic, because hmm. uh, they, you know, to their credit, they spread the work around and everybody gets good. some some sugar. Everybody and stuff gets and some time on the playground. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you also good. do commercials too. I mean, you were doing the commercial with the F. We were talking about F one fifty to circle all the way back to that. You did the first Eco Boost uh, commercials, the long format uh, YouTube videos of, right, of showing how durable the new Eco Boost was, hauling lumber and driving cross country and all that stuff. Right? I had a great relationship with Ford until my guy retired, which is so unfortunate because I've been a Ford guy my whole life. I mm. I have a hard time getting. I just sold a GMC truck because because it, it was a GMC. <laughs> It was a perfectly good truck. I really yeah. liked it, but well, there goes I our couldn't drive it. Uh, right. Here goes the sponsor. Right. Sorry. Right. Don't worry. We don't have GMC. I've been working on that for months. That's oh, right. Well, you know, that's why you invited me over here. <laughs> Screw it all up. Um, Again, but, you, but you were pulling this pulling lumber and. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that was that was really fun. Was to do all of their website stuff, which was a lot of endurance, quasi endurance testing, but. Um, yeah, it's still probably that, on YouTube. Isn't that it? first EcoBoost motor was really um, fascinating to me. They ran 150,000 miles on Ford's dyno, which includes profiles that are in the Nurburgring and Pikes Peak and Baja. And, and so they run the engine through all of these sort of profiles for 150,000 miles. They sent that to the Kansas City F-150 plant stuck it in a new 150. The engineers drove it from Kansas City to Dallas, tuned it all up, had it all dialed in, perfected. The car prep guys pick it up there. They drive it because we're never allowed to drive picture cars on the set. You just don't. Right. Why would you tempt fate? But So they drive the hero truck from Dallas to the coast of Oregon up on a logging job. And, um, and this is one of those big monster logging jobs with the big machines that can cut the tree and take right. all the branches off of it and debark it and do everything and cut it into sections. So these were about 40-foot sections with about a two-foot diameter on the fat end. Um, and they just used a choker chain to the trailer hitch, and I towed something like 25 of those things about a quarter of a mile up the hill in four-wheel drive low range with the front and rear discs locked to prove that that truck would do that on, on a dirt right. road, and it did repeatedly. And a funny story, that was when the backup cameras first started coming out in pickup trucks. And so there's these logging guys, and these are like real men, you know, got plaid shirts and everything. <clears throat> and uh, I'm backing up perfectly centered on the log, and they're going, oh, this guy's really good. You know, ah. I finally had to show him the camera and the dash, or, you know, the dashboard that, it shows cheater. it, but yeah, yeah, that's what they called me. Funny enough, um, anyhow, we did that, and then uh, the same truck went like down to Florida. We or took something. it to Homestead Speedway. The right. car prep guys drive it from you know the northwest to the southeast to Homestead. I had a custom uh, aluminum two car trailer built. We put two cup cars on it. I think the truck would tow 10,400 pounds, so we had to put about 600 pounds of lead on the trailer to get maximum towing capacity. But we did 24 hours of laps at as fast as we could go. With the trailer. Which, with the trailer, towing max capacity. Uh, had four drivers, and we took shifts and stuff. Wow. Uh, but about the fastest we could comfortably go was about 90, 91 indicated. Because uh, we started idea. getting we a lot of a couple of race cars, but well, yeah. right front tire was getting a lot of scrub, and uh, probably so <laughs> yeah, really. we were pretty much driving the rim at that point, uh, not trying right. to take any right. sort of fancy. Not going to pass on the infield. Right. No, no, no passing through the grass yeah. with the truck. <laughs> well, right. the thought was there. <laughs> yeah, um, it was. And then <laughs> we go from, uh, and this is this hundred and fifty thousand mile dyno motor. Then the car so prep guys the drive it to. Bullhead City to Laughlin and the four lane highway that goes from Laughlin up to Kingman huh. is a, a grade that is kind of the car test industry standard grade to pull a, a max load up. So they bring in the competitive trucks 
load them all to their max weight or I, and maybe all three trailers weighed the same. Um, and the Ford beat it every time legitimately, no matter how we traded out drivers, you know, to, to, I think to the other two guys credit, this truck was new in 2012 and their trucks were new models in 2013. So I don't know if there was magic involved or not, but then they take it from Bullhead Drive it to Phoenix to, um, I forgot the name of the Baja team. That's a Ford sponsored, uh, Baja team there, but they pre, they stuck it in a Raptor, which was new at the time, stuck the motor in a Raptor and pre ran the Baja 1000, then entered the Baja 1000 as the backup truck. And then they took that motor to the Detroit auto show, uh, and dismantled it at the Ford booth for the first time in front of everybody. And it, it looked virtually brand new. I mean, every, every the motor that went through all that, all that stuff. So I became a, an EcoBoost fan because wow. cause to have that much power out of a V6 that's not, I mean, that truck ran and acted like a six liter Ford diesel. Hmm. Um, and yeah. I, so I ran my picture car company with some of those things. And, you know, we were towing trailers and doing all that we did. Um, Crazy. Crazy. And then we did the 2015, the introduction of the aluminum 150. And tortured that in similar ways all over the country. Um, right. So, I don't know. I've got a great background with Ford. Right. And, yeah. and, and, wow. and feel so pretty honored that I got so, to be involved with some of that. So, what... And I, I think we'll probably be wrapping soon. Yeah. I think so, where... What in the world do you do now? <laughs> what? what well, with, but I know we got some movies coming down. So, you're same old, same old. Okay. Greatness as normal. <laughs> Any other uh, in, insane ideas that you think I, you should I'm probably doing try? I'm something you're going to love. Yeah, is that? Are you going to do a loop? No, do it on the, no, uh, no. Tanner got that one done, I think. Tanner not with a Phillips. not with a truck. Yeah, but he jumped one pretty far. Mm, I, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. not a big rig though. It was a Aww. pickup truck. Yeah. That's not anything. Anyway, I'll shut up. What 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 crazy? Are you allowed to say the craziness? You're well, no, do? it's not a it's not a movie thing. It's actually for it's you. for us car guys. I've spent my career going everywhere. Um, to um, uh, never find mind a, the find man a, behind the curtain. Find thing. a piece of road to film on, <laughs> right? And um, it's hard to do, especially in LA, to shut down a road. It takes a lot of uh, permits and a lot of money yes, and a does. lot of law enforcement and a lot of people. Right. So I bought ninety-seven acres in Castaic on the north side of the Pritchett Detention Center prison. <laughs> okay, not sure. far from my home. I spent well. It's <laughs> You're nice in prison. To be, Close, to not too far from the close prison. to your final oh, destination, handy, maybe. It. But um, I now have a. Uh, it's not paved yet. That's my next thing, and I have no you idea where it. I'm stealing that money from. Oh, oh, but right. I now have a 960 foot long ray, uh, runway on top of a mesa that's 72 feet wide, surrounded by a little road racing course. And we're going to. Uh, it's going to be for uh, automotive photography. Mm -hmm. It's going to be for uh, journalists because 660 feet is an eighth mile. And so oh, I'll can, need a business card and, for and that. And you can uh, do all your slalom jazz, yeah. and I've got a skid pad so area. You land a plane on and, it. So your, so your next craziness isn't a stunt. It's a environment <coughs> to do film and photography uh, uh, for automotive. Vehicle, is a, it is a vehicle-centric movie ranch. Wow. And so that is, uh, That's that cool. is the dream. I don't know how I'm going to financially make it happen, but I... I know what I did last summer during COVID. I mean, that was a whole lot of illegal bulldozing. Right. So, good, uh, good man. He, yeah, yeah. Well, I did it well. It's a, I mean, because I brought in really good telling guys. the whole world on a, no. on a YouTube show. No, no. So, how does everybody? This is the shameless plug time. How does everybody learn about you? What's the website? What's the keywords you can type in for Google? Well, truckstunts.com or micraianmotorsports.com. You can see Spell demo that. reels. Uh, M I K E R Y A N M O U S no M O M O U S should have just said T H A T yeah yes. <laughs> so Ryan is R Y A N yes. Motorsports dot com so Mike Ryan Motorsports dot com yep. but I haven't really raced in about five years now and I'm I'm still and your trucks in a museum my both two trucks are, are in the museum two trucks are side yeah. by side in what, a museum. what museum uh, a guy has a private collection um, outside of Minneapolis mm -hmm. with the most race trucks, Bonneville, drag racing, and hill sure. climb, and road racing. It's it's an amazing, it is the collection. It is the preeminent truck collection of performance trucks in right. America. It would be simple to say probably if they Googled your name and said Mike Ryan stunt, Mike Ryan big rig, 
They could they probably find, find a ton of stuff in, on YouTube yeah. about you. Just I think my picture's still on the wall in the post office. Oh, so, good. Yeah. And if you well, type maybe. in Mike Is Ryan, you get a... note jug, too? Uh, <laughs> He's no, still missing. I'm, I'm, my mom thinks I'm lost. After That's he right. went off yeah. the... If you type in Mike Ryan, you get uh, some kind of musical group, so that might be you. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and thank you for for dragging him up yeah, here absolutely. into this. It, it's yeah, so amazing. I, I am I am fascinated with no fear. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there's some no, fear. No. What, what's it? You just can't let it drive? Fear is always in the car, but you just can't let him drive? That's that's a good statement. Mm. I, I fear is something like a cloud. I think cloud, that's Paul Tracy, you know, by the way. Uh, that's a, said something like that. That's good. That fear good is always in the car. You just can't let him drive. I I'm scared of people that aren't afraid of this. Sure. You know. Okay. If, if you don't show up with a little bit of fear, um, then I, be re- like, I then really don't. Militia guy? I don't want to be on the same <laughs> set. You know, I need to run. Oh. Um, Oh. Because you know you're doing something risky, and we try to plan it as much as we can. We try to leave ourselves out. So your cold you know? comfort is a calculated risk. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Once you have a comfort zone, I mean, who hasn't gone way too fast in these? None of these things have shocks no, or I brakes haven't. or decent steering, right? Unless you've done it to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everybody builds a great big engine, but never puts new brakes on it. I, I put brakes on sometimes. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's I'm good. I'm a thinker. Put four yeah. of them on. <laughs> so we, I think we've got to, re- and thank you again. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Everybody go check this way. guy out. Your your brains will just come out of your ears, I'm telling you. Very humble. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. We're going to have another, uh, we, we used to do breakfasts with uh, Jason Lewis. Breakfasts? Breakfasts. I don't know. Uh, You're Mike, the editor. That's right. <sighs> Sounds good to me. Mike Ryan, thank you for coming. We we need to do that uh, deal with Mike and, and Jason Lewis and James. James yes. is a, James is a professional two wheel stunt drive guy and other stuff. So uh, and, and those were and some James, crazy breakfasts. James gets much credit for that Astro Spiral jump. He gets at least equal credit. Wow. Um, He's a good it guy. Took a lot of thinking and practicing and testing to get that to work. But um, James is the guy that when you're doing your deal with the uh, the the Oh, he Size matter. He's, he's the, the one that's on driving in. in no. oh, he's, he's in the, the Crown Vic. He's in the cop wheels. car on yeah. two wheels. Oh, you take a picture of him yeah. driving by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have we'll, we'll have James on, on too. Cameras. Right. Yeah. You know. We'll have James on too. So well, anyway, thank I, you. Again, I'm going to officially sign off for you Mr. Do. Jeff Smith. I'm Steve Strope. Of course, Cam Benty and Mike Ryan again. Everybody, go check out everything to do with him. It's super killer. Thank you for watching, and we'll have more. I'm sure.